and welcome to IGL Weekly, powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Give them a call at 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. We're tomorrow's broadcasters today, alongside Eric Hauser and Darren Winberg. I'm Sean Brown, and fellas, it was a heated day in the IGL. Week 7 got underway. You could feel the rivalry in the air. Almost all of this week's games and tensions were at an all-time high. Coming up, you're going to see just how aggressive things got when we get to the Steelers-Eagles games. The Falcons are on the wrong side of another blowout, but we begin with the New Jersey Bulldogs, and the big question everybody's asking is, can the Dogs get to 7-0? I doubt it. You doubt it? Yeah. yeah. No. I'm just kidding. Hey, they're, they're the top dog. We should, we should call them the top dog so far. Um, best record in the league, best record in their division. Let's see how they do this week. Darren, this streak is getting exciting. It is getting exciting. You could tell this week coming in Camden. It's an in-state rivalry. They were tweeting, tweeting wars to start the, you know, the game, and it was very intense. You could feel the intensity in the air. Apparently, I heard from one of the Bulldogs that the Lions actually predicted a win before this game. Oh, well. Who might predicted have... that victory? I, I'm not sure exactly who, but supposedly somebody did. All right, well, let's find out. The Dogs and Lions, here's the opening kickoff. Taken to the house by Terrence Casper. 6 nothing early lead. For the Lions, things looking good early on, guys. Yeah. They predicted that win and starting off early. Yeah, well, we talked about last week how the Bulldogs, they've been having trouble with their special team. So how are they going to fix this, Eric? You know what? Um, as we'll get into a little bit later, but they had trouble throughout this game with special teams, and I heard after the game some of the coaches talking about they might just have to put some of their wide receivers in. Mm -hmm. Not so special teams so far. This is the second week in a row, Darren. Eric brings up a good point. Maybe they have to put some of their star players on special teams. I think they're going to have to because what happens is if it's a 50-yard field. It's a short field. If you give up half the field to start, it's not looking good. You're putting your defense in a bad position. And in arena football where points do matter, uh, someone told me you need three stops to right. win a game. So and in, in this case, it was big Terrence Casper, 6'7", wide receiver. Very quick, did a great job, but... The Bulldogs shouldn't allow somebody just to take it to the house like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. All right, a short drive for the Bulldogs that ends with Mike Merritt to Molotaris for a touchdown. That's Andrew Molotaris' uh, third touchdown of the season. Yeah, he had he had two this That's game. That's his second. Check his second of the season. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had two this game. Yep. And, uh, you know, he could have had the third. Mm -hmm. um, Merritt just missed him a yep. little bit on one play, but he had a great game today. Yes, he did. Number 11 stepping up big. It's kind of log jam there for the, for the Bulldogs. They have a lot of talented wide receivers. Yes. So, you know, there's not that many balls to go around right now, but Andrew coming through for the dogs. He's coming uh, through a lot, and I heard uh, Mike on the sideline. He was telling him what a great route he ran for that one in the corner end zone. And he's like, keep going. He's, you know, willing him on, and that's the you know, mark of a good quarterback. You yeah, know? No that, about that's it. one thing about Andrew. He runs great mm -hmm. routes. He does. All right, Molotaris with a big two-touchdown performance. Speaking of number 11, after the game, he caught up with CSB's Luke. Take a look. Luke Latanzio here with IGL Weekly. I'm joined by New Jersey Bulldogs wide receiver Andrew Molitoris. Andrew, congratulations on the two touchdown catches today. Thank you very much. Uh, came out working hard, and uh, you know we finished hard, and uh, as a result, we got the W. Now, week after week, you guys seem to have stretches in the game where you're not really playing on top of your game, but you always seem to persevere on that. Can you tell me a little bit about the mental toughness this team seems to have? Uh, yes. You know, sometimes you come out flat, but you know, football is how you finish, and uh, you know, we finish every game like it's our best, and, uh, you know, we got the W. Got the W one more time. You're now 7-0. and How long do you think you can keep the stretch going? Yeah! <laughs> we love you, Andrew! <laughs> um, you know, we just, we don't really look at, uh, you know, how far we can go. We look each week. So, uh, you know, we just, we focus on 1-0, and and that's our, our task, so... You know, we're looking forward to next week, and, uh, you know, we're going to work hard starting Monday. Trying to go to 8-0, I, I can understand that. How cold are you right now? I'm absolutely freezing right now, but, uh, you know, it feels good because we got the W. Well, once again, thank you for your time, and congratulations on the win. Thank you. Yep. Bulldogs. Thank you. Luke Latanzio with IGL Weekly. All right, so we pick up the action. The Lions come back with a kickoff return to the two-yard line. Number 11, Terrell Lane, the other big play threat for the, the Lions, takes one down to the two-yard line. And here we go again. What is going on here? Achilles heel of the dogs all year. Um, 
again, we don't want to beat a dead horse, but they're going to have to make some changes. And I look to, you know, the coaches to make some changes this week. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, you know, again, they take it down to the two-yard line. We've been saying it all year. The defense played well. The offense played well. It's just this one part. And if they can get it down, they're going to be very, very scary. Like, and they're if, not already. And if you look, it's not up the middle. It's usually down the sidelines. So it's a wonder if they're getting you know, a legal block in the back or what. But I wouldn't say so because it's every week. If they are, it's not being called. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so the very next play, number 11, Terrell Lane. Gets thrown a bone by Cabasa. He throws him a two-yard touchdown strike. At that point, the Lions 12 to eight, guys. Yeah, they, they strike twice real quick. And again, thanks to the special teams mm -hmm. and the Bulldogs. And they're looking to be in business. They're, you could hear the crowd. Very, there's a lot of people there, surprisingly. So. And so yeah. far, this prediction made by this anonymous Lions player looking good so far. Yes. All right, so near the end of the first half, the Bulldogs go back up 14-12. And so do the tempers from both sides. What happened there? Well, they uh, started to go um, drive down the field, and a ball came right in the corner and came, I don't know where. I, I have to ask a question. Was it true that somebody had to move their equipment yeah. while they were on the sideline? There, there was a scuffle, a lot of trash talking at that point by coaches and players of both teams. Believe it or not, the refs made the Bulldogs move all their equipment to the opposite side of the field. Now, I've seen a lot of things in football over the years. This is one thing I've never seen before. Hey, now it looks like regular football. There's a team on each side of the field. This is very true. And not hockey. But this is the Pylon Sports Complex. Right. So, all right. So then the Bulldogs outscored the Lions 20 to nothing after the scuffle. To the second half action we go. We saw a lot of Childs, Eric Childs in the Wildcat formation. Now this was the second week in a row we saw Childs in the Wildcat formation. Not so successful last week. How did it go this week? Yeah, uh, last week the, the most successful play they had and it was a one yard touchdown to Big uh, Wright. But this week he looked good. Mm -hmm. This is this seems to be something that uh, Coach uh, Turk wants to do, Darren. Yeah, he wants to do. He wants to switch it up in the offense and Mike Merritt, he's been under injured a little bit lately, as we all know. Yeah. So this saves him, it gets some goal line, and it proved effective because yeah. he ran for three touchdowns. Yeah. Merritt was, he's hobbled by a knee injury, so they yeah. want to rest him as much as they can. Yeah, a good point there. All right, so dominant offensive line play in this game. So finally, the Dogs' offensive line gets it together in the absence of one big dominating force. Yeah, Wright wasn't there. Big Wright, who uh, you know played, played basketball for the Globetrotters, 6'10", 420. We've talked about him before. Wasn't there this week, but you would never know because nobody got in the backfield. Um, I have to give props to the O-line of the, the Bulldogs. Merritt had all day to pass. Yeah. Kind of one of those things where they, someone's out, they step in, and they all stepped up you know, in um, Wright's absence. So. Yes, what a great performance. Yeah, and they dumb. did a good job run blocking in this game as well. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, they had all the time in the world back there. All right, so they were able to run the ball down their throats, guys, in yeah. this game. Yeah, the Bulldogs actually ran the ball nine plays in a row. I don't think we've seen that all year from any team. Well, their offensive line was just dominant, and it's you look at they manhandled them. A lot bigger, and Coach Turk said before the game, he's like, we want to run the ball and show that we, you know, we're different than a one-dimensional team. I was just going to say, let me clear it up. It, it, was, it's, it wasn't normal running plays. No. I mean, they ran a couple normal plays, but it was the Wildcat, and Childs ran the ball yep. a lot in this game. Of course, yeah, for three yeah. touchdowns, too. Absolutely. All right. And uh, injuries to the Dogs. Yeah, they, Jimmy the Show got injured. Um, costly injury. Hopefully, big loss. Yeah, big loss. Yeah, I, I think he might be okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard yet, but, I mean, he did hurt his, I believe it, it was his right knee. Yeah, and it was, uh, he said it popped, but it came back in. So it was right near his meniscus. Obviously, we're not going to speculate. So I think he was hopefully going to get an MRI, and hopefully everything, you know, turns out for him. So. All right, so after the game, the winning head coach of the Bulldogs has a powerful message. Here's Coach Turk. This is Darren Wimmer live from the Pylon Sports Center. Coach Turkel, 34-12 victory. A chippy victory. You guys started off slow. What happened? Uh, listen, Camden brought some fight to us. I'll give them some credit. Uh, they were not going to lay down in the first half. We made some mistakes on special teams, which were specially handicapped. Um, they weren't good at all, but at halftime, I told them. I said, if you're really a championship team, if this is what you are, then you have to go kick this team in the second half. 
And that's what we did. We came out strong. We ran the ball all over them. And nobody's going to stop us when we do it. We're 7-0, and and we're moving on to the next one. The victory did come at the price of a cost. Jimmy the Show got injured. Yeah. Mike was a little bit injured all day. Uh, what do you guys need to do to hopefully keep going? All right, listen, everybody has to step up and play bigger and better. You know, if somebody's hurt, someone else steps in. Jimmy got hurt. Marlow comes in, hasn't gotten much snaps this year. Catches a big two-point conversion. You know, might need to rest Mike, so whatever Charles do, we ran all over them. We do what we got to do. I don't care how we got to get it done. Running, throwing, whatever. We're going to get it done. And you clinched a playoff berth. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. For the Pineland Sports Center, Coach Turkel, Darren Wimberg, and CSB. 7-0, Bulldogs. Come get us. Back to you in the studio. All right, so there's Coach Turk's message to the league. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Steelers Coach Henry has a powerful message for the New Jersey Bulldogs. We'll have it for you as we continue right here on CSB's IGL Weekly. So you've been thinking about changing careers. Well, now is the perfect time to check out Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Discover the exciting world of audio and video production. They have a campus right here in Cherry Hill. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or visit GoCSB.com. So uh, what are you looking forward to the playoffs? Who do you want to face in the playoffs? Um, whoever's in front of us. Like We're a team that doesn't run from anybody. Um, I've been trying to, as a schedule, we've had some issues with some teams mm -hmm. uh, being suspended, not being able to play, just stuff that just happens in a league. Uh, I've been looking for an opportunity to play the Bulldogs in the schedule. Uh, it almost happened last week. It was close. But, uh, of course, we want to see them. Steelers don't run from anybody, yeah. contrary to belief. Our team is 82 years old. We have multiple national titles. Although this is a rebuilding season for us, we're getting better every week. We'll be in the hunt. That's all there is to it. Well, you knew where I was going because uh, you hear the – Around the league, I read every the book, I read the, the websites. I'm the commissioner of the league. I see it all. I usually don't answer to it, but you baited me today, so you got that. I appreciate but, uh, yeah, that. We're not, we're not afraid to play anybody. Coach Turk Alley's not afraid of you. <laughs> Thanks, Absolutely <Coach>. not. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Right, Good win. You. And we welcome you back in. And whoa, powerful stuff there by Steelers head coach Henry. I feel like. Head coach Turk and Henry are exchanging jabs there a little bit. What yeah, do you think? Well, you know, there had been some suggestions around the league, a little buzz that the Steelers had been avoiding the Bulldogs because they weren't on the original schedules. But Henry made it clear that they're not afraid of anybody. No, they're not. And as you said, he's like, I read the news. I hear what everyone says, but we're not afraid of everyone. He clearly says that. And if it gets to the playoffs, if and willing it happens, He's ready for them. A little so. surprised that the IGL hasn't gotten these two teams to come together and play during the regular season to this point? Yeah, I think, honestly, I don't, I would, don't know what it is, whether it's yeah. schedules or buys or what, but this is a matchup not only we want to see, but I believe everyone in the IGL wants to see also. Well, here's the thing. These are two good football teams, so if they don't hook up in the regular season, it's likely that they'll probably meet mm -hmm. in the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, and might be the final game of the year. All right, so there was a football game that the Steelers did play in. They've got the Eagles this week, guys. Yeah, the, the Eagles, you know, they haven't looked good all year, and they just kind of continued that trend. Yeah, yeah, their defensive line really uh, didn't play very well, to yeah, be honest and, with and, you. Yeah, and neither did their offensive line. Mm -hmm. Some issues, big number 12. He was on his back a lot. Yeah, their quarterback number 12, you know, he, you know, he had a lot of pressure on him. He, you know, he, he has a little weird style. When, as soon as he gets the ball, it seems like he throws it right away. What's he almost name? rushes it. I, we don't know his name. It's not on the we'll just, roster. We'll just call him Randall for now. Scrambling <laughs> Randall. Yeah, Randall Cunningham. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, um, he didn't get any help from his line, really. He always has pressure on him, and they have offensive woes every week, and it continued. It did, and you could tell he was getting frustrated because near the end of the first half, he must – three times he was just like – you could hear him like, come on, guys, like trying to rally the troops, trying to be a leader, but it just got too, too much for him. didn't have any time. No, he didn't have any time. Got too much for him. Yeah, and I guess it would for any quarterback. He takes so many hits, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you, hopefully you still get back up. But uh, obviously you take enough hits, and uh, maybe you won't. So luckily he was able to continue play, but certainly they just weren't able to get in sync offensively. No, and he was on his back a lot of the game, and they did run into a very good Steelers speaking, team. Speaking of running, the Steelers were definitely able to run the ball with success, and we saw uh, number 23 for the second straight week having a lot of success. Yeah, Axel, he had a great game. You know, he's been running really well lately yeah he's been running around and it's he started he actually wasn't even on the roster and he was able to come in due to some injuries and he's fulfilled that position admirably yeah if I number 21 well. skip got injured yep. big opportunity for axel and speaking of the man we've got axel right now let's take a look 
Live from the Pylon Sports Center, this is Darren Wimberg with Axel running back for the Concha Hawkins Steelers. You guys had a big win today. How did it feel? Feels good. You know, we didn't play the way that we wanted to. Perfect, obviously, but it was a good win. O-line was uh, tough today. Uh, D-line was tough today. We kind of take the humidity and uh, use it to our advantage since we're used to being here in week seven, so it was pretty good. Okay. Now you were able to rush for one touchdown and rush for uh, close to 100 yards. Yeah. What were you able to do different today as opposed to other weeks? Um, just doing the same stuff as last week, you know, just make sure I get north, run guys over, and uh, get into the end zone. Now, finally, uh, game got cut a little short. got a little bit chippy out there. Yeah. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Like I always say I watch film. Last week, number 17, the guy's nuts. He plays hard. You know, he, I think he needs to calm down a little. And, you know, when you're losing, it's tough to kind of keep your composure. And uh, that's pretty much what happened. Well, no one got injured. Now, did Coach say anything to you guys about the end of the game, about, you know, be prepared for anything to happen? Because you guys were up a big lead. Coach just says get ready to win and play hard. And that's all he really wants us to do. Execute, execute, execute. All right, so Axel, he's been big all season long. The Steelers mm -hmm. hope that that can continue. We had some fireworks in the game. We'd be remiss if we didn't get to it. We have a football game that breaks out of the fight, guys. Yeah, it was a little scuffle the second one of the day. And, you know, it, I guess it was frustrations because the Eagles were frustrated they couldn't do anything. Or do you think it's that muggy heat in the Pylon Sports <laughs> Complex? Uh, why are these guys duking it out? Why do they want to fight so much? Well, one of the guys said that uh, the Eagles got thro thrown out because the quarterback threw a punch, and that might be attributed because he was on his back all day and just finally got fed up with it. And who knows? Let's be honest. What I was told is that there was a scuffle broke out. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but the Eagles at that point yeah. told the refs that they didn't want to play done. any longer in the game. There was almost four minutes left in the game. Well, never, <laughs> never a dull moment, is no. it? No. Well, the game was out of reach. Week. The game was out of reach anyway. And, and, so, and perhaps some frustration. Oh yeah, I would say definitely a lot of frustration. Yeah, I mean you know? the the Eagles are pretty much getting picked on every week. They're not doing too yeah, well. Yeah, we yeah. mentioned their quarterback, number twelve. He's frustrated. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the team's frustrated as well, and uh, that's where they took out their emotions. We saw that last week with Camden, but they responded positively. So maybe you know the Eagles will come back next week and respond. it might might get them going a little yeah. bit. All right, so we move on. The ASI Panthers have a game with the Philly Falcons, still looking for their first win. Can that change against All Stars Incorporated? It's actually All Star Inc. All Star Inc. Yes. All Star Inc. Did they change it? No, no. they didn't. Um, actually, Bill Mattis, Coach Bill Mattis, told me that it's the name of his company, All Star. It's All Star Inc. Well, thank you for the correction, Coach. We appreciate that. Yeah. Sorry about They've that. They've been playing like an All Star team most of the season so far. Yeah, probably at this point the second best team in the league. Mm -hmm. They definitely have the second best record. They do. They look good at all stages of the game. A lot of skill skills. positions. I'd say their quarterback. Starting, you know, great. Chris Brownlee. Yep. Speaking of the quarterback, a negative storyline for the Panthers. Yeah. Quarterback Chris Brownlee is injured. He's on IR, guys. He's out for the rest of the season. What happened? Yeah, he, he got hit pretty hard. Um, his coach thought he was roughed up a little bit after a play. Injured his knee, out for the season. Let me stop you. What have I been saying the last couple weeks about Brownlee? He's been he's been under heavy pressure. Yeah, heavy pressure. Yeah. You said he's their offensive under, line has been yeah. Is there one weak spot? Yeah. He's been under heavy pressure. It was only a matter of time. It's unfortunate that this yeah. happened to this young kid, but you can only take so many hits in there, mm. and unfortunately, uh, cost them their starting quarterback for the season. Yeah. It it did, but they uh, had a you know gem in waiting, and he uh, he pulled out at, at real well actually. Did and you're talking well. about number eight, Marcellus Salmon yep. steps in for the quarterback. Uh, to the quarterback position for ASI. He didn't miss a beat, did he? Yeah, Marcellus is actually a wide receiver slash defensive back. and they, Some quarterback skills. They put him in there, and, you know, he, it wasn't the smoothest transition, but he started to warm up, and he did what he had, he had to do this week, and I only expect him to get him better. And from now on, their backup quarterback is going to be Steve Sid Sidnor, who's a wide receiver and slash quarterback. So those two are going to have to, to keep everything going for the Panthers this season. Yeah. Yeah, and he, we've seen him a lot in the passing game, and now he's the backup quarterback. And, you know, quarterbacks can go down, so he's going to have to be prepared to step in there in case they need him. Hopefully the, for the Panthers, that won't happen. All right, it's time for our final break, but on the other side, it's the IGL Showcase Game of the Week. I love this moment every week. Exciting game. All right, it's coming up right after this. The CSB's IGL Weekly rolls on. So you've been thinking about changing careers. Well, now is the perfect time to check out Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Discover the exciting world of audio and video production. They have a campus right here in Cherry Hill. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or visit GoCSB.com. 
And welcome back to CSB's IGL Weekly alongside Eric and Darren. I'm Sean and still to come game balls and also the plays of the week. That's later. But right now we begin the segment with the IGL Showcase Game of the Week. Yeah, it was, it was an exciting game. It came down to the end. Yeah, it came down to the wire. Started off a little bit slow, a little bit, maybe a little bit sloppy, but oh, five minutes left in the game. Aye. All right, exciting. We're, we're talking about the Delaware Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Hornets. All right, so bad snaps by the Hornets, an early theme. Yeah, bad snaps. Um, you know, they had at least two or three in the game. Yeah. A lot of penalties by both sides. It ended up being a very sloppy game, especially toward in the first half. Yeah, the first half was real sloppy. Um, they did make some adjustments in the second half. Uh, you know, coaches probably got on them. But to start, it seems like they weren't ready to live up to the hype of the IGL game of the week. All right, fourth and goal from their own seven, and what a play this is. 43-yard touchdown pass from Muhammad Abdullah, the quarterback of the Hornets, to Terrell Frazier for an early 6 to nothing lead. Where have I heard that name before? Yeah. Terrell Frazier? <laughs> we were talking Frazier up all name. season. We thought he was the running back, but he had switched uh, jerseys mm -hmm. with Steve Burrows. So He finally know, gets his name called. Yeah, he finally earns a spot on our show now. Well so, played. yeah, great, great uh, touchdown pass. And Darren, time. what a pretty play. Oh, what a pretty pitch and catch. But, oh, my goodness, you got to talk about – Fourth and uh, 40 hemmed, from their own. Hemmed, hemmed in deep in their own end. Yeah, like just it was a couple fumble plays, a couple, you know, botched snaps. Helmet just, to helmet, offsides. Yeah, it's just, but, you know, Muhammad Abdullah, beautiful pass, and Eric, bailed him out. Kind of gutsy there because, you know, you think maybe they want to, if they're going to turn it over and downs, pick up some type of mm -hmm. yardage to not give the other team mm -hmm. such good field position, but they want for it all there. Yeah, the Hornets and Abdullah, they're, you know, they're confident in their, yeah. in their, players and, they be. and they got and it showed he should have been it was a great play and it's good to call Terrell Frazier on a play that he was actually in <laughs> I got you on that <laughs> all right is the Bucks defense susceptible to big plays it, it looks like it I mean a, a couple big back -back strikes weeks, yeah too. all right next possession a 44 yard touchdown pass to Brandon Inge and the two-point conversion for a 14-0 lead for the Hornets. Brandon Inge, we've heard his name called. He's the backup quarterback. Played a few times for Muhammad, a quarterback this year. Yeah, Ng is very, very athletic. He's very quick, good hands, and he, he ran most of this touchdown. It yeah. was a great play. Individual effort. And like you said, he's a backup quarterback, so this is important. If Abdullah goes down, he's a very good quarterback that can you know lead the rest of the season. He's got yeah. some skills. Lots of times the team loses their starting quarterback. Their season could be over. Not in the case of the Hornets. They have two very capable mm -hmm. quarterbacks, Darren. Well, we've seen it twice this year with uh, ASI Panthers and now, um, or the Bulldogs, excuse me, too. So now if he ever goes down, they got a good backup quarterback. Right. And something to point out real quick, he's they're the, still the defending champs yep. until somebody says different. So Amen. they got to show that championship heart. Yep. All right, speaking of good quarterbacks, the Bucks have one. His name is Hobdy. The Bucks go down the field and score a one-yard quarterback sneak by Hobdy. With the quarterback keeper, 14 to 10 at that point. Yeah, it's uh, Hobdi. You know, he had a couple of those this game. And, you know, they had a quick strike. They came back into yep. the game here and to keep it close. He too. wasn't having very much time throwing the ball. And he was seemed a little bit inaccurate this week. So what what do you do? Get start. It's like a basketball player. Drive to the hoop. He runs to the legs, yep. you know. So, Eric, we have a ball game. Yeah, it, it's a ball game, and uh, you'll see it comes down to the end here. All right, so we'll jump to the last five minutes of the game. The Hornets are up 16-14, to 14, and the very next play after that, very next possession, I should say, the Hornets come back to sting the Bucks. Hobby with another quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown run, 2016. The Hornets holding on at that point. Yeah, it's just holding on. Yeah, it, like, you know, there's still a minute left that, you know, in this game. So you never know what's going to happen. Still time here. left. What do you think happens on the last drive, Darren? I think the defense might step up, but we will see. We'll see. One minute's a long time in this game. And that's, in fact, what did happen. The defense did step up, and that means the final score of this one, the Philly Hornets hold on in the narrowest margins by the final score of 2016 over the Bucks. Big time win. They're really looking to uh, get a couple games over 500 now and get on. Uh, I think they play more consistent football for the first time this season. Is this the start of it? For yeah, them? they you know they want to start putting some games together that are really solid games. We've seen a little inconsistencies with them week to week. Because we we would agree they've been pretty mediocre this season. Oh, I'd right? say mediocre. Yeah. I think they're hanging the championship hangover. Teams go through it. All levels of teams. You know they're all championship high and then they come down. It's like. 
oh, we're good, we're champions, we don't need to play up to their level, but, but every team wants to beat them. That's very true, and, and it's like you said, though, they're the defending champions, yeah. yep. and you know they may have a different roster, but until they're knocked off, Eric, they are still the champions, and they have a lot of pride in that. And let me point out, the Bucks aren't pushovers. Uh, you no, know, they are not. They played the Bulldogs twice tough this year, mm. six-point games both times. They've got size and athletic ability on that team. Hey, listen, I said over the Memorial Day weekend when we did a show that the Bucks team, they were – to me, the team that's much better than their record indicated. Yeah. They've got a good quarterback in Hobby. They've got a really good receiver in McBride. They can play football. We saw them hang with the Bulldogs last mm -hmm. week, so they're not a pushover. No, they're, they're a good team. They just can't get consistent. And, and they're young they and inexperienced, and that, I think, is the biggest thing. In close games, how many close games have they been in this year where maybe a veteran would have you know, propel them it's kind of like victory. the Camden Lions. You know, yeah. they're they're in every game, mm -hmm. and it just depends. They they got to pull it together so they get more consistent to win at the end of yeah. these games. All right, new segment here, new feature on the show. It's called Game Balls. We'll kick it off with Darren Winberg. Who are you giving your game ball to? Number twenty three, Axel, my man. I interviewed him. Great game, and I think he's doing a great job for the Steelers, and I think he's going to propel them to. I don't want to say championship against yeah. the Bulldogs, but... Steelers showing their depth there. Yeah, Taking depth. over for Skip. Correct, yeah. Eric, game ball, E-House. You know, I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. I'm giving out two this week. Oh, that's, that's breaking the <laughs> it's rules It's our first there. week I'm in your... Giving, I'm giving one to Muhammad Abdullah. He uh, had two touchdown passes and two um, touchdown runs. And I also want to give it to Eric Fastlane Childs of the Bulldogs. He was in the Wildcat, looked very good this week. Ran in for three touchdowns. About this from Fastlane Childs on the season defensively. Four sacks, one interception, including one taken back to the house for a defensive score. On offense, seven rushes for 32 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. Talking about a man who does it on both sides of the football. Yeah, a beast. great player. All right, I'm staying with the Bulldogs for my game ball. I'm going with number 11, Andrew Mulatares. He's got three touchdowns on the season, including two this week. Yeah. 11 receptions for 139 yards on the season, and there may not be a nicer guy in the IGL. Very, very good guy, very humble, you know, well-spoken. Yeah, very good, very nice. Yeah. Well, Andrew, you get my game ball this week. Two touchdowns, good job out of you. Good game. Well, that about wraps it up. We're just about out of time for this week. But, guys, the IGL playoffs are right around the corner. It's starting to get exciting. I can't wait. Oh, you can feel it in the air. You, you know, you've got teams talking a little bit trash, as we alluded to earlier. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Looking forward to Orlando. So am I. All right, for E-House, Eric Hauser and Darren Winberg, I'm Sean Brown. We'll see you next time on the Connecticut School of Broadcasting presents IGL Weekly. As we leave you today, take a look at the top plays of the week. So long, everybody.